rattly lifter. I don't know at this point if there's any way to fix it. Um, I do admit that I have not tried the uh, Berryman uh, B12 like super strong carburetor type cleaner straight down the push rod yet. You know, basically first thing cold start in the morning, you gotta let that oil flow for a little bit. Or it'll hammer, it gets really loud if you try to drive too soon. But that's not what the video is about. So let's move on to the featured programming for this event. Get you centered on here. I get you zoomed in on the addition to the S10. Let me turn off this noisy engine real quick. Yeah. But we were out here just after the uh, enjoying the eclipse, and uh, it was actually a lot, uh, a lot better than I expected. Uh, my neighbor was a little disappointed that it didn't get completely dark outside because where we live in Missouri, you've got just literally just moments of a full eclipse, but it didn't cover the sun completely enough to where it would make it dark. So I apologize to my neighbor children that it didn't get dark like they hoped and the way their teacher told them that it was going to get really dark and it didn't. I apologize that that's the way things happen sometimes. The issue I'm having with my blazer right now is my wife, God bless her soul, has figured out that even when I have all my heat and AC controls on the off position, cool, you know, the temperature's on cold, everything's off, for some reason I'm still getting residual, what I'm going to call vent airflow through the uh, heater outlet that comes out right on top of the um, transmission tunnel. Well, I'd, I had never, I hadn't noticed it. I can talk. I know if I try hard enough and believe in myself, I can probably make that happen. But I just assumed it had been really hot to, because the weather's been really humid this summer. So we just rolled two windows down and drove the car wherever we needed to go. Well, we were on our way to Olathe to make a purchase, an impulse purchase, for some of the uh, infamous and hard to find solar eclipse glasses. And uh, she kept saying, gosh, it just seems like the heat is on. I was like, oh, the heat is not on. Look at the controls, it's not on. So she had stuck her foot up on the transmission tunnel and was like, well, apparently you're retarded because there's hot air coming out of this vent. And I was it can't be sure enough something and I have I have yet to determine whether the blender door on this 85 s10 blazer has is it cable operated or is it more likely to be vacuum operated um, I may have an issue with vacuum not operating my blender door properly which absolutely just is horrible it sucks so, as a first strike, we are going to make our first attempt to reduce the heat in the passenger compartment by eliminating hot water to the heater core. Now, I, I admit, I came up with this idea at least partially due to uh, Gearhead for Life when he did it on his C10 to uh, stop hot, hot water from getting into his heater core because apparently he was having issues too with the uh, hot water going to the heater core uh, interfering with his ability to, I guess, cool his truck down in Texas. Uh, basically, we went to Menards and got a, because they only have three quarter size and half inch, which if you know, the heater hoses on the LF 5.8 return of my originally I was like oh I'm gonna put one on both hoses on me okay that's a waste of money all you have to do is stop the flow from the three-quarter hose into the uh, heater core because it stops flow on both sides I mean it can't come from the water pump into the heater core 
it can't return from the heater core nor can it back up into the heater core because there's no flow the water is stagnant it can't go anywhere so basically what uh, to stop from getting a mess what you do and I don't know if everybody has these but you just take a set of these needle nose vice grips one on either side of the um, repair slash installation point for your let's call it a hose splice ball valve whatever you're going to do to your heater hose you basically just set this to where it will clamp down on the hose using this end of the tool and it will stop the water flow so basically i mean now granted you don't want to go full crazy with it and tighten it down and tear or tear puncture or cut the hose you just want to get it tight enough to where when you clamp down on it it just closes the hose and you lose all loss of fluid so the best case scenario is you want to put one of those needle nose or the, that style vice grip above or below where you want to cut your hose so you don't lose fluid you could lose more volume coming from the water pump and the engine block than you could from your heater core if that makes any sense so if you're st stuck with only one pair of those stupid uh, vice grips then just put them closer to the largest source of water or coolant cut it make your, repl your repair and move on but basically what i purchased and i got it at menards but you can probably get it at any home improvement store is one three quarter inch ball valve two hose clamps which i bought the wrong, wrong size because the ones that they were recommending for this ball valve weren't big enough to fit over the hose after you shoved in the ball valve you think i would know that by now at this age but apparently i'm still learning so i went through my uh, hoard of junk found two of the appropriate size hose clamps and what i did was i clamped everything off so i didn't lose any fluid and i did end up losing probably about a quarter of a cup you know while i was jacking around trying to get the little thing together but what i use to cut up to a three quarter inch hose is a uh, antique pair see I'm getting kind of close there these are actually from my grand my grandmother these are antique rose bush like pruners but when you keep these things sharp up to about a three quarter inch hose you can literally just slice right through it so you know anybody runs across one of these at a yard sale or something like that these old antique pruner shears work good for hose hose cutters and of course anything smaller than three quarters like a fuel line or something like that they're literally like made for it so i just want to share that little tidbit of information but basically what we're looking at is a way to stop all hot water flow or coolant to the heater core in an effort or an attempt to cool off the passenger compartment hopefully this will be uh beneficial to somebody out there probably people who live in really warm weather or hot weather climates if you in the summer when you don't need a heater you can actually have a cooler passenger compartment and have a more efficient ac output if you don't run hot water to your heater core so um, i did locate it as far away as i could uh, from where i'm going to be you know getting in and out of there messing with uh, battery you know engine whatever that was the most logical place for me to put it so you know it's closed now this would restore flow cart says right on the valve which way you got to go to for, for flow and that stops flow oh jed's a millionaire so anyway thanks for watching this channel please like and subscribe share all that good stuff i'll try to get up some more information